In today's video, I'll be showing you how to add a custom model onto a weapon in UEFM. So to start off, you just gotta come up to the top right to Verse Explorer, click on it, and then right click on the first thing here. This should be the title of your island. Right click and click add new verse file to project. Once you've done that, you just have to name your device. We'll call it custom weapon and create it empty. Once that is created, you can now open up verse that is in the top middle here and just go to your custom weapons right here. Then you want to copy and paste this code. This code will be in my discord. The link to that is down in the description. This code is only $20 and it allows you to add as many custom weapons in your island as you want. So once you've purchased the code, you just right click on the text file that you downloaded, select all, right click again and copy. And then all you got to do is just paste it into the island. Then come up to the top left, click file, save, and then come to the top right and just X out of it. After you've X out of verse, come up to the verse up here and build verse code. Once you've built verse code, come down to your content drawer and you should have a verse class right here called game underscore manager. Just drag it out onto your island. Once you've placed on your game manager device, you'll see here on the right, you have two settings. You have the HUD controller and the VFX underscore list. Now, every time you click the plus sign, this gives you an additional custom weapon that you can add. So you can see, let's just delete them all and add one for now. You click index here and there's a bunch of other settings. So it says here that you need a enable power up trigger, a disable power up trigger, a conditional button and a HUD message device. Now just come down to your content drawer and look up power up and it should be the first thing to pop up should be right here vfx power up and just drag it out onto the island then i'm going to come up to the top right and just rename it to vfx power up zapatron because zapatron will be the model that i'll be adding to one of the weapons to show you guys as an example now for the settings it's going to be infinite effect duration respawn yes time to respawn zero ambient audio off and visual effect custom effect now later in the video, I'll come back to this device and actually add the Zapatron model. But next we're going to come down to the content drawer and you're going to look up trigger and you're going to want to place one down on the map and then copy and paste and place down the other. Now these two triggers will be our enable power up trigger and our disable power up trigger. So come to the first one and, na and name it trigger enable, then go to your second trigger and name it trigger disable. Once you've done that, select all of them and we'll go over the settings now. Once that is done, select both of them and the settings will be visible in game off, triggered by player off, triggered by vehicles off, triggered by sequencer off, triggered by water off, trigger delay zero zero, trigger SFX and VFX both off and that is it. Then we're going to go back over to the game manager device and select this pick actor from scene for the enable trigger and select the enable trigger and then do the same thing for the disable trigger. Next, go to your VFX power up device, scroll all the way down to pick up. We're gonna use the pick actor from scene again. Pick up when pick trigger enable is on triggered and then do clear when pick trigger disable is on triggered and save those changes. And if we go back to our game manager, it shows that we actually need a conditional button. So we'll just go back to the content drawer and look up conditional button and it should be the first thing to pop up just drag it out onto the island now for the zapatron model we're going to use the railgun so go to key items and just look up railgun and place it in now obviously for your weapons it might be different you might want it to be a scar or a pump so just add those weapons in but for me i'm going to use the railgun so i'm going to put the railgun in and then for the conditional button settings just turn off allow interaction and also visible during game should be no, as well as turning off show key card directions. Once we've done the settings for the conditional button, we're gonna go back to our game manager device and just connect our conditional button to the game manager device. So you can actually see that there's another setting called HUD underscore message. So this is actually for how to add a custom crosshair to your weapon. I'm not gonna show it in this video, so it's not that long. But if you guys do want a tutorial on how to add a custom crosshair, please let me know down in the comments. Now to make the custom model appear in the weapon's hand and overlaid over the weapon, you want to right click in your content drawer, go 
to FX and create a Niagara system. Then you're going to look up directional burst or it should be the first thing over three right here. Create and I'm going to call it Sapatron FX. Once you've created that, just double click into it. You're going to delete the render. You're going to delete everything in particle update. In render, you're going to click the plus and you're going to add mesh renderer. And once you've added mesh renderer, come up to the top right, click on meshes here, click on this and add your custom model. So my custom model is a Zapatron right here. I'm going to add it in and you can see that my model is right here. Now to delete everything in particle spawn and then particle update, you're going to look up static mesh location, click on that. And then in triangles, click on triangles, come down to the bottom right and click sockets. Once that is done, make sure to save and compile. And that should be good. Now we're going to test it in game. One thing I actually forgot to do was to go back into the VFX pickup and then you know how you put custom effect? You actually want to put your VFX Niagara in there. So I should find my Zapatron VFX or whatever you named it, place that in. And then since we want it to be in their hand, like on their weapon, it will be on right hand. Now we're going to save. So I actually forgot another setting. Go back to your game manager and then under your power up, you want to put one instead of zero. So every time you make an additional weapon, you actually got to keep putting it up one. So since this first one is one, this one will be two. If you make a third weapon, it'll be three, etc. So we actually don't need this. So I'm just going to delete it. But yeah, just make sure you put that. Another thing is that you're going to need two trigger devices, a VFX power up and a conditional button for each additional weapon. So make sure you don't connect these same triggers to different VFX and conditional buttons. Make sure that they're all different. So I've just loaded into the game. You can see on the left that the first device is saying that there's no recognized item. But when I pick it up and pull it out, it will actually disappear. And you can see the model's not actually on the weapon because it is above me. So sometimes this happens if your model is not aligned correctly or how the creator of the model exported it. You can actually fix this and I'll show you guys how to do that now. To fix this issue, you gotta go back to your content drawer and double click on your Niagara device. So once you've loaded into this, you can see that your model is far above. It might be different for you guys, but if you do wanna fix it, you wanna click on mesh renderer right here. Go to your Zapatron model or whatever model you got. Press the down arrow. And then this is where you can change how big, small, and the rotation and the pivot of it. So for me, I know that it was way above me. So I'm actually going to change where it's located. So that was left. This is forward. So this one's going to be down. So I just got to put it into the negatives where it's right in front of me about like that. And then I got to change the scale. So for now, I'm going to do 0.1 for all of them to see how small it actually makes it. So you can see my weapons right there. And it looks like it's actually facing the wrong way. So I'm also going to rotate it. 90 degrees okay so i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees sorry i'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so it's actually facing me i just got to compile save and you could also see that i didn't have textures on the weapon so if you're having that issue as well go into your material here and then click on your material go into the search bar and look up naya and then check all of these apply at the top left and save and now your model should have textures when it's on your weapon now that i've made those changes and loaded in now when i pick up the weapon and pull it out you can see that the zapatron model is now on the weapon so the weapon still works how it usually does but now it has the custom model on it so when you add custom models to weapons just make sure that the weapon that corresponds with the model is actually similar so for the zapatron how the zapatron used to work was that it was a one shot like the railgun so that's why i'm using the railgun so if you have a model that looks like it shoots really fast use the scar and just other examples like that 
Hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below on what tutorial you'd like to see next. Also, make sure to join my Discord. The link to that is down in the description. It'll be really appreciated, and I'll catch you on the next one.